trust your eyes. Exercise your imagination. Today, a story by Gus C. Bays about a jury and justice. And the holdout. Starring Ross Brown. Broadcasting System presentation of The Zero Hour. Brought to you by the Ford Motor Company and Lazy Boy Recliners. This is The Zero Hour on Mutual Radio. Help you, sir. Uh, I heard there was a late, late show going on here. Uh, could I be mistaken? Well, it's clearance time, you know, and all of us Ford dealers are featuring low end of the season prices on every model. So we're calling it our late, late show. That's very strange indeed. Uh, perhaps I have the wrong place. Is there a basement? You found the right place, all right. Just look at the low clearance prices we've got on the strong, quiet LTD and our mid-sized Torino. I could use one of those in my work. And for the best in small car economy, just check out these late, late show prices on the compact Ford Maverick and our little basic Pinto. Hey, what about those two beauties over there? <laughs> I really like them. Even our sporty Mustang II and magnificent Thunderbird are going at low clearance sale prices. Well, we all have to go sometime. Don't miss your Ford dealer's late, late clearance show. There are plenty of good seats left, and the price of admission may never be this low again. The jury passing on the prisoner's life may, in the sworn 12, have a thief or two guiltier than him. They try. As the bailiff of the county courthouse opened the door and let the 12 people into the jury room, it wasn't likely that any one of them remembered those words by William Shakespeare. They were locked in and they began their deliberations. But for one, Gabe Donovan, there was no need for further discussions. While the jurors studied the evidence, Gabe Donovan studied the jurors. The moment had come to decide whether a man was guilty or not guilty to a charge of murder. Mr. Muncy, the jury foreman, collected the folded pieces of paper and sat down. Miss Kelly, would you keep count? Yes, all right. Uh, the first one is guilty. 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 <coughs> guilty. 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 Not guilty. <coughs> guilty. And guilty. Eleven to one. One holdout. Now what are we supposed to do? Now? Start over, I guess. How much time have we got? All day. And if we don't reach a verdict? I guess they'll lock us up in a hotel overnight. Well, they're not locking me up. I gotta get home tonight. Well, then let's go over again, folks. Someone will have to change their minds. Uh, Mr. Donovan. Yes, Miss Carmichael. You've been awfully quiet. Well, I was trying to think the way the one holdout might be thinking. Is this something we fail to consider? Uh, possibly the matter of intent to commit murder. Was it definitely premeditated? <laughs> Avery knew his wife was with that Cy Randall fella, so he got a gun and went up there and killed him. I don't care how you spread it, that's murder. Well, now, there's more to it than that, Mr. Smith. For instance? Well, there's the plea of temporary insanity. Yes, that confused me a little. The judge said we should consider temporary insanity. What about that psychiatrist that testified? Now, he said temporary insanity was possible in this case. But he said Clyde Avery was as sane as any of us. Yes, but we must consider Clyde Avery's mental condition at the time of the shooting. After all the stories he'd heard about his wife and... Well, how would you feel under those conditions, Mr. Vale? Me? What do you mean by that? Well, I mean... Uh, I mean, we're supposed to consider these things. Avery pulled the trigger. That's intent, ain't it? No. Oh, where is it? I, I wonder if I can make a phone call. I, I want to call my wife. Guess I really started something. Well, some of these people are beginning to get on my nerves. I'll be glad when it's over. Yes, it's been a long trial. Oh, yes. And that poor man downstairs, Clyde Avery, sitting there day after day and squirming and waiting and watching us, wondering about our verdict. <laughs> Doing the best. 
What's the matter, Mr. Donovan? Mrs. Carmichael, you sound like you might be the one holdout. Uh, me? Oh, I'm no, just... No, no, don't tell me. I don't want to know. See, Mrs. Carmichael, if you are the only one who thought he wasn't guilty, well, then I've got to talk to you. To me? Why? Yes, because I'm not really sure he's guilty either. You're not? No. I, I let the others influence my thinking, but uh, there were so many contradictions. Now, you take that business about the struggle when the gun went off. Do you think there was a struggle? Well, I didn't at first. But the medical examiner said the bullet entered the victim's chest traveling down. Avery would have had to hold the gun over his head, pointed down to give the bullet that direction of travel. Like this, you see, it's ridiculous. It's too awkward. Might miss. But the direction of the bullet was downward. Well, then the gun went off as they both fought for it over their heads. I see. Uh, my verdict was wrong. It was just wrong. If you voted not guilty, you were right, Mrs. Carmichael. Trust a woman's intuition, I always say. Uh, yes. You'll have allies after the next ballot, Mrs. Carmichael. You wait and see. Do you think the others will change their minds? Well, look at Mr. Bale. He seems so upset. And Mrs. Medina? Yes, and, and Miss Keller, Jane. Still going over her notes. Well, she needs help, too. Oh, why don't you talk to her? She'll listen to you. She's very fond of you, you know. I will. And you should help Mrs. Medina see this more clearly, too. Poor thing. Yes. I think I will talk to her. Good. Help her to understand, just as you've helped me, Mrs. Carmichael. All right, I will. And I'll talk to the other ladies. Good. Well, we can't let an innocent man go to the gas chamber. You've made me see that. No, no, we can't. I'll talk to Mrs. Medina. Hi, <sighs> Joe. In here. Yes. Gabe, is anything wrong? Wrong? No, why? You haven't said a word to me all day. Well, Jane, we've been busy, you know, so much on our minds with the verdict. You're, you're not mad at me. Of course not. Why should I be? Well, because I voted the way I did. I explained how I felt about this case last night, Jane. Made it clear so even you could understand. I, I just had to vote the way I did, Gabe. I, honest. Well, I... then, last night was a waste of time. That's all. The other nights, too. You let the others influence No, you. no, I didn't. I, I think he's guilty. You think? Oh, I, I mean, I... Don't you understand, Jane? You can't think. If a reasonable doubt exists in your mind, you can't... Honestly, consider him guilty. Oh, I'm so confused. I, I don't know what to think. Well, then go sit in the corner, study, and note some more. It's all there in your notebook. Well, will I see you tonight for, for supper or something? I don't know. They may lock us up for tonight. Will they do that? If we can't agree. You, you aren't going to change your verdict. I'd jump out of this window first. You, you really believe Clyde Avery is innocent, don't you? I wish we could have met some other way instead of here. I think I'll go over my notes again. Hmm. Uh, anything wrong with Miss Keller, Donovan? Hmm? No, no, no. Uh, I, I was hoping we could talk a little before I took the next ballot. Well, the bailiff will be up soon. Maybe we'd better take a ballot first, see how it's going. Uh, and, uh, maybe you're right. Uh... Folks, folks, can I have your attention, please? Um, I think we should try another ballot before lunch. Now, if you'll just uh, sit down, please. Uh, as before, choose either guilty or not guilty. And fold your ballots and pass them down to me, please. Uh, Mr. Dunman, you might keep count as I read them. Uh -huh. Absolutely. All right. Uh, have I got all the ballots now? So. All right, then. Uh, guilty. 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 Not guilty. Guilty. Guilty, 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 not guilty, not, not guilty, not guilty. Oh, no. Eight to four. Still a hung jury. RCA asked these TV chief engineers about solid state color television sets versus tube type sets. Steve DeSatnik. WCVB-TV.
Solid state makes a difference in fewer repairs, reliability, and excellent performance. Robert Porter, KMEX TV. 100% solid state generates less heat, and therefore the components should last longer. In a nationwide survey, 95% of the TV chief engineers polled said they'd prefer to buy solid state for their next color TV. All the new RCA sets are 100% solid state, the XL100s. Charles Abel, KFMB TV. I just recommended to my son that he buy an XL100 solid state set because of the greater reliability with less maintenance. For color, for reliability, consider the new RCAs. Every one is an RCA XL100. 100% solid state. Don't settle for less. You're 17, 18. You've graduated from high school. You want to make something of yourself. But you don't have that something to make it with, like money for four years of college. What do you do? Well, you don't need four years of college to get a good job. Today, there's a crying need for technicians in exciting fields like oceanography, electronic data processing, health service, environmental control, forestry, and many others. Technicians earn twice the salary of the average high school graduate. Some even make more than four-year college graduates. All you need is a year or two of technical training. To learn how you can become a technician, send for our free booklet. It's called 25 Technical Careers. Write Careers, Washington, D.C., 20202. If you can't afford four years of college, write Careers, Washington, D.C., 20202, and make something of yourself. <laughs> was clear. Clyde Avery was not guilty. The others simply had to see it my way or I was neglecting my duty as a juror. Donovan, is that clock right? Mm, maybe a little slow, Mr. Vale. I... What's Muncie waiting for? Why don't we get started? They've started. Donovan, what do you think? Are we going to get out of here tonight? Well, I wouldn't bet on it. What do you mean? Some of the jurors are changing their minds. Why can't they get together on a verdict? Would it help to talk about it, you think? Look, look. <laughs> it's my wife, Edna. We've been arguing. She said she was going to leave me. Well, leaving her alone tonight might give her a chance to think it all over. Maybe if she... I'm not home tonight, she'll think I don't care. And, and there's, there's another man. Oh. You, you see why I gotta get out of here tonight, don't you? Yes, of course, but so many of them are changing their minds. I'll be honest with you, Vale. I'm, I'm changing my verdict on the next ballot, too. Then talk to them, Donovan. They'll listen to you. These people got a lot of respect for you. One way or the other, get them to agree. Please. What am I gonna do? Hey, Donovan, I, yeah. I want to talk to you. You keep harping on that temporary insanity. You one of them that voted for an acquittal? Well, I don't mind telling you how I voted. I did change my mind on that last ballot. I thought so. You know why? Nope. Because I believe a man can go insane temporarily. A man's mind is a complex instrument. A small thing can unbalance it, upset a man's reasoning, and it can happen just like that. Just like that, eh? Could happen to anyone. You, me, Mr. Muncie, even Mr. Vale over there. Well, I have to see it before I believe it. I'm not trying to change your mind, Mr. Smith. Only you can do that. I changed mine. We're all trying the best. Uh, what's he doing? Who? Mr. Vale. He rang the buzzer for the bailiff. I don't know. There's the bailiff. Somebody ring for me? Uh, I did, bailiff. I wonder if, uh, if I could make a short phone call. Uh, no, sir. I'm... I'm well, wait, wait, look, I, I just want to call my wife. Well, the judge won't permit it, sir. I'm sorry. I won't mention the trial. You can listen in if you want. Well, there's nothing I can do until you've brought in a verdict. I'm sorry. We may be here all night. Well, then we'll have to lock you up, sir. No. No, you're not locking me up tonight. Hey, hey what's the matter with you? I want out of here. Let go of me. No, no, no. I'm going to get home to my wife. No, no, no. Get a hold of me. Somebody grab us off. Get a hold of me. Get a hold of me. Get a Tell, tell, tell him about Edna. Oh, he, he's tell all right him, now, Bailey. We'll take care of him. <laughs> tell him. <laughs> Let me go. <laughs> yeah. Please. Yes, 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 we can handle it. Now, I hope this is not going to cause any trouble. No, no, it's it's all right. Just uh, keep him quiet. Yeah, we, 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 we. Here, here, I brought the poor man a drink of water. I, I don't want a drink of water. Just 
Leave me alone. Oh, no, I've you, never you seen just, anything just, like it. He was just sitting there, minding his own business, and then... And then, just like that, it happened. Went plumb crazy. Temporary insanity, Mr. Smith? <laughs> Hi, this is Jim Backus with a special announcement about an exciting Lazy Boy chair sale taking place at your Lazy Boy dealers now. Lazy Boy reclining chairs of your choice are available at unheard of savings for a limited time only. Treat yourself and your family to a lifetime of comfort and beauty. Once you do, you'll wonder how you ever relax without one. Get America's comfort favorite, a Lazy Boy chair now. See your Lazy Boy dealer today. <laughs> Run in there. He'll be glad to see you. Yes, he will. Hi, I'm Jim Backus with news about an exciting sale taking place at your Lazy Boy dealers today. You may now put a famous Lazy Boy reclining chair into your living room at unbelievable savings. The ultimate in beauty and comfort can be yours in the style of your choice to match your favorite decor. Don't just sit, relax and recline sumptuously in a Lazy Boy. Your choice of quality colors and fabrics. See your Lazy Boy dealer today. <laughs> Do that. <laughs> Hurry up. He's waiting. Yes, he is. Ted Brown here with the new seekers for Johnny Horizon 76. We've got to do it now. We can't go on forever. Falling up the stream, the river down the sea. Let's put our power to work. Plant a tree. Pretty up a neighborhood. Get involved. Let's clean up America for our 200th birthday. Can you dig it? You can. Write Johnny Horizon 76, Washington, D.C. You know we Join small groups around the room. They were like weather vanes. They'd go whichever way the wind seemed to be blowing. Mr. Muncie? Uh, yes? Don't you think it's time for another ballot? Well, the others want one. Yes. yes. All right, then. All right. But this time we'll have an open ballot with a show of hands. Unless you have any objections, Mr. Dunham? Objections? I know. Not at all, Mr. Muncie. All right. Now then, if everybody's in their place, Fine. Each person in favor of a verdict of not guilty, raise your right hand. Uh, Down, you count them. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, eight. Eleven. Eleven votes in favor of an acquittal. Oh. Eleven. And in favor of a verdict of guilty, one vote. Eleven to one. One holdout. Oh, no. And now you know who it is, Mr. Donovan. See if you can make me change my mind. I must want to say, I can't make you change your mind. Only you can do that. Each of us must vote the way he believes. Yes, well, I still believe that this was a planned and premeditated act of murder, and the evidence proves it. Well, you're the only one who thinks so, Mr. Muncie. The only holdout. You can't say a reasonable doubt doesn't exist. It does. So how can you say he's guilty? Yes, all of us want to do the right thing. You must be wrong. We could be out of here in a minute. If you change your verdict, Muncie. I think it's a case of temporary insanity. Clear cut. Mr. Muncie, it isn't a sin to admit that you were wrong. Now, all of us searched our hearts and realized our mistake, and we changed our minds. You changed your minds. You. Yes. Why, your minds were changed for you. You were led like a bunch of blind sheep. And there is your good shepherd, Mr. Donovan. Uh, look, Muncie, I... Oh, didn't... I saw you talking to them, confusing them, convincing them that they were wrong before getting them to change their verdict. You don't know what you're talking about. No? Well, I'm not much at talking, I'll admit that. Oh, but you are, Donovan. You talked these people right out of an honest verdict. You thought you were right, so everybody else had to see it your way. You're crazy. Crazy! Donovan, you... You think a lot of yourself, don't you? 
Oh, I've known men like you before. They think the world revolves around them. Egocentrics. Always think they're right. Never admit they're wrong. Now, look, Muncie, I've had about enough of this. You're more than an egocentric, Donovan. You're an egomaniac. That's why you made everyone change their minds. You can't admit that you're wrong, can you? No, not your kind. If you did, you'd begin to wonder about other things, about yourself. And your ego can't have that, can it, Donovan? You're the one who's crazy. You can't talk to me that way, Muncie. Oh, no, I'm just getting started. Look, I'm going to talk look, and keep talking. Enough, enough, enough. People get a chance to do what they What is it, Bayless? Uh, you folks can go home now. The jury has been dismissed. What? Yeah, that's right. Have to come back. You see, Clyde Avery broke down a few minutes ago and pleaded guilty to the charge. He wow. pleaded guilty? Uh-huh. He admitted lying on the stand, asked for the court's mercy by confessing. But he, he couldn't have. Well, he did. But our verdict was... Uh, we won't need it now, ma'am. It's all over? That's right. You folks can leave. Uh, I gotta get home. Wait, wait, folks, before you go, Mrs. Carmichael. You said enough. But, uh, Mr. Smith, listen. I'm sorry, Donovan. But just wait, please, folks, let me explain. Miss, Miss Kill, please, Jane. Get lost, Buster. Jane, wait, if you'll only let me... Explain. Yeah. You made them all very proud of themselves, Donovan. Muncie, Muncie, I... Will you admit that you were wrong now, Donovan? I was right. You were right. I was 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 right. probably know all about Ford pickups, how they work like a truck, ride like a car, how they've got Ford's famous twin I-beam front suspension, front disc brakes, standard, choice of an economical 6 or 3 V8s. But maybe you didn't know about Ford's new Super Cab. Super Cab's the only two-door pickup that's roomy enough for a full back seat. I didn't know that. Well, Ford's new Super Cab pickup makes a big difference in capacity to carry people or things. You can do most anything with it. Order Super Cab with an optional bench seat that's five and a half feet wide. That's room enough for a family of six to ride in sedan-like comfort. And the bench seat folds flat to make a load floor. I didn't know that. Or get two facing jump seats. Optional. They fold out of the way for cargo. Or order Super Cab with no rear seats at all. Then you get a full 44 cubic feet of storage space. I didn't know that either. Ford's new Super Cab. It's news even to people who thought they knew all about Ford pickups. See it now at your local Ford dealer. I'm Rod Serling. Close your eyes. Exercise your imagination. And join us again on our next presentation of The Zero Hour. The Holdout is an original radio drama by Gus C. Bates. Russ Martin was heard as Gabe Donovan. Featured in the cast were Parley Bear, Mary Lansing, Marvin Kaplan, Jane Webb, and Byron King. Zero Hour, created by J.M. Colas, directed by Don Hughes, is produced in Hollywood for the Mutual Broadcasting System by Radio Productions Incorporated. Music is composed and conducted by Stanley D. Hoffman, Rochelle Sherman, associate producer. This has been a presentation of the Mutual Broadcasting System.